All right, so listen, I've got a really exciting video for you guys today. Why? Because I've got the whole ReverseSelling.com team in one place to talk about one of the greatest challenges real estate agents, you and I, are facing in this shifting real estate market. We're going to break down eight tactical ways that you can take away from today's video Implement them in your business immediately on how to get your listings sold. One of the biggest questions I'm getting from the agents that we're coaching is, listen, I've got listings. I'm getting these listings. You're right, Brandon. It is getting easier to get listings, but they're just not selling. So in this video, we're going to break down eight specific things you can do in a real estate shifting market to get your properties on the market and get them sold. And if anything today makes sense to you and you want to have a conversation with us at the team about potentially coaching together, I will put a link beneath this video in the description. I'll pin it in the comment. Click that link. You can talk to our team about what it looks like to coach with us. And then you can decide if working together with myself and the ReverseSelling.com team makes sense or not. So with that being said, enjoy the video. The first thing I want to kind of jump into is looking at the current realtor landscape. And what I mean by that is we've got 1.6 million active licenses. 500,000 of that 1.6 million got licensed during a seller's market. And you know what we see a lot of the time, quite frankly, is over the last two years since the pandemic, you have most of the active agents, the newer agents gotten licensed in the last two years during a real estate market that we call a statistical anomaly. You know, a lot of these agents, Dominic, they've never listed a house outside of hitting the market, getting 10 offers in 10, 10 minutes, and then they think they're Superman. It's like, wow, I'm a really good agent. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And that's exactly how it has been the last couple of years. So yeah, you're right. And so the other thing is, even if you look at, okay, there's a lot of uh, hundreds of thousands of agents that have just gotten licensed in the last 20 months, call it. Of those, half of them still have not sold one house in 2022. So really? the other half that are left there's a large portion of them who have only sold one house in 2022. So what happens is if and when, and those, that's a huge assumption, if and when a real estate agent does get a listing, their finger is nowhere close to the pulse of the market. I mean, not even close. So not only do we have a, a huge massive problem with the vast majority of the licensees, experiencing what they've experienced, which is a very, very hot seller's market. I mean, quite frankly, any Tom, Dick, or Harry could have got their license in the last two years, put a sign out in the front and get multiple offers and look like an absolute wizard. Well, as the market's shifting, those times are behind us. So let's get into the eight things I think agents you guys can really do that are going to help them through this massive, massive issue. Number one thing that I wrote down is I think helping the audience understand, number one, how is it that buyers determine value? And I brought this up on our coaching call, you guys, the other day, and I think a lot of people struggled with the answer. And the answer obviously being comparison. You see, that's the thing. As a listing agent, what we have to get really good at is understanding the landscape of a seller's competition. And we have to say, okay, how do we make this person's property stand out from the crowd? I want to share something with you guys and then um, get your feedback on this. Were any of you guys on the coaching call this week by chance? Yeah, I was All right. on. All right, cool. Let me show this to you guys. This is really cool. So let me try to figure that out. All right, can you guys see my screen okay? Yep, yep. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so this is what I, I shared. Um, let's do... This is what I shared with, with our, our coaching clients earlier this week. So when I said, okay, 
we have to figure out how do buyers determine value. And people struggled. They came up with all kinds of different answers about this or that. And I said, well, we need a, a point of comparison. And so I showed this little dumb drawing that I drew, but I think that it really makes <laughs> sense. It's, you know, a diamond and then a rock, both priced at $100. And it's clear that the diamond has more value. But if we take away, as an example, and we take away uh, one of these variables, well, then determining if that product at its price has any value. Does that make sense? Like if there was just the rock mm -hmm. and it was $100 only, Colton, but there was nothing to compare it to, it's hard for the consumer to say, hmm, the perception, is there value, is there not, without the comparison. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So what I showed them was this is what our this is what our agents are struggling with. This is where I want your guys' feedback. So one of the most common things, as you guys know, is um, a lot of new agents get bamboozled. I'll call it from sellers in that believing anything but price will get the property sold, and they. They get so bought into, because it's the questions you, you we all get every day. Well, Dominic and Andrew, Ron, what do I have to do to market the property to get the, 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 the listing sold? My listing isn't selling. And they get totally influenced by the seller in believing that it's anything but price. Are you guys hearing that a lot? Yep. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. I see a lot of these agents, they get listings and they freak out just yeah. by getting a listing. Just feeling overwhelmed, like, what am I going to do now? Now I've got it. Now it's like an oh shit kind of moment. Exactly. They, they don't know the market. So they, they, they're not getting help from their broker. And, and they're mm -hmm. literally freaking out. I just got yeah. a listing. Now what do I do? No, that's a great point. So let me share this with you guys. And then Dominic, Andrew, I want your guys' thoughts on this. So this is what I shared with, with the group. I said, okay, let me, let me try to paint a picture for you. You have two houses. You've got this house that the perception is that it's a, a lot nicer of a house than this house. You guys would all agree with that. They're sure. both priced at 300,000. Well, this one obviously becomes the buyer's obvious choice. Everybody in the group said, yeah, Brandon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. I said, okay, cool. Well, let's look at uh, the second example. Now I said, okay, what if the property that wasn't maybe as nice was lower price. Now, maybe the buyer has some question marks. Now, maybe the buyer asks themselves, well, maybe I can buy this house and bring it up to this price, potentially. Some other buyers would say, no, 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 no. This one at 300,000, there's no way I can bring this property to this property at 300,000. This one's still the obvious choice. I said, okay, cool. Then I showed them another example. And I said, well, what if it was like this? Well, then they say, well, there's a no brainer all the buyers are going to flock to the nice property at the lower price. And I said, okay, cool. I totally get it. So, so far we understand that when we price property, we have to price it against the competition. But what the sellers want you to believe is this. And I think you guys will get a kick out of this. The sellers say, Hey, I want to price my house that is less desirable at a higher price. And I want you to market it. I want you to put it into a real estate magazine. And here's the thing that's funny about that is the newer agents are buying into this. They believe that it's their fault, that they're not marketing the property correctly, that the seller is correct. Are you guys seeing a lot of this with the agents you're talking to? Yeah. And I, yeah. I think it comes back to the importance of, it's one thing to know how to price a property like that. Like any one of us here, any, most of the agents we talk to, within 20, 30 minutes could do a CMA and, and roughly know what it's worth, but how you communicate that to the client is what's important. That's right. And, and point one, I think that it's just critical. Andrew, I, uh, I want to get your thoughts on it too. That, that is exactly right. What Colton just said is exactly right. How do we communicate to a seller at a listing appointment, how to price their property? And the answer is by comparing it to something else. And so we're going to talk more about that in just a second. And that is how buyers determine the value. Andrew, you're going to add something to that? Yeah, I was. I, I think that one of the big problems, really, like what you said, is like 
a third pretty much of the the agents out there right now have gotten their license just in the past couple of years during this anomaly the only thing that a lot of people know is that i can price it at whatever i want or whatever the seller wants and we're going to get an offer ten thousand over what we asked for it regardless right. of what it looks like. like that's that's really how it's been in a lot of places maybe not everywhere but a lot of places it's been like that and so i think being accustomed to that is part of that problem where they're like well maybe they do understand the importance of the value but they're just so accustomed to things being the way that they've been for the past couple of years that they're it, it it's just you know it's causing a lot of panic because it's not that way anymore yeah that's a really good point and and maybe something i i almost forgot about it's that when when the five of us or whoever is 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 telling new agents the importance of really mastering the market ron you talked about this before the the agent in the last 20 25 months that went in one ear and out the other because it's like dude i don't need to know anything about the market i list it at whatever price the seller wants i put the stick in the front yard and i get more than that every time so brandon andrew dominic why do i need to know the market i'm not studying anything and i think andrew that's a really good point is yeah. now uh now more so than ever before you, you can't, that's just not going to happen. Like you're going to have to be an expert in order to get these properties sold. Go ahead, Ron. Well, the other thing that, that I hear a lot with our agents that, that get in these calls is that there's no confidence. So that's why they're leaning towards what the seller wants, not saying, look, this is what you're up against. Okay. Right. This is what the competition looks like. And they, they don't, they don't know the market well enough to stand behind what they're trying to deliver. Therefore, they have no confidence. Therefore, they just go ahead and do what's happening and nothing happens. Yeah, no, that's a really good, really good point. So let's talk about the second thing. Oh, go ahead, Dom, you wanna add something? Yeah, I was just gonna piggyback on what Ron said about confidence. I mean, that that is, I mean, that's the crux of all of this. You and I have talked about this many, many times. Sellers- Hey, Colton, mute, actually... mute, mute yourself, Colton. I think we got some sawing and dog barking. Baby's crying. We got we got every sound effect possible on today's uh, uh, podcast. No, no, that's great. Yeah, no, uh, sellers buy confidence because most of the time they don't know anything really. They just know what they've heard in the pa or read in the paper or seen uh, on YouTube. They don't know. But if you come in and you confidently know what is happening in your market and you can convey that because you've been inside of many, many homes, you know what the competition is, you can explain that to the seller, like they stop asking questions and they just fall into line because they know that you're the one to guide them to the result they're looking for. It all comes down to confidence. Spot on. And when you said that the other day in, in one of our coaching sessions, you said really what we're doing at a listing appointment is we're selling that confidence. That That's is, right. That's what we offer. We sell the seller confidence in our ability to navigate this market to get their property sold. That is what we sell. And that's why I think so many agents have a hard time when you know they ask us, well, what's the script? What's the script? What's the script? What do I say? What do I say? And it's not that we take a position of like pushing back on that. Learning what to say is important, but not nearly as important on the confidence that you have when you say what you say. So let's move on to the second point. The second point is I wrote down getting the seller's permission to tell the truth and then tell them the truth, right? So here's the, here's the problem. The problem is little, uh, I'll just, I won't say little or big or small. It doesn't matter. New agent, Jill, she gets her license, you know, 12 months ago, she gets her first listing. To Ron's point, she's so nervous on what to do, let alone try and shoot the seller straight on the property's condition, the price, the terms, any of those things, because why? She's so worried about losing this listing. Oh, it's the only listing I got. I can't tell the seller the truth. They might not want to work with me. If I tell them the truth on price, they may not list it with me. If I tell them their bathroom looks like absolute dog shit, they might not list it with me. So, right? So point number two, in this market, if an agent is going to succeed in really serving sellers, we have to get their permission to tell them the truth and then tell them the truth. 
I'm going to offer up a script, you guys, to the audience right now, which they always love. And then I want your guys' take on point number two. So one of the things that we all train and coach to is how we get the seller's permission is this, right? So I'll, if I role play this with you, Dominic, and Dominic, you're the seller, I would say, Dominic, listen, there's a lot, a lot of real estate agents that you may talk to who would tell you anything you want to hear, whether it be true or not, in hopes that it would mean you would list the property with them. And so they might tell you your house is worth more than it is. They might tell you that the condition of the property is better than it is because they're afraid that if they offend you, that they'll lose the opportunity to get their little pretty face in the front yard. Dominic, does that make sense? Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, I think I may have interviewed one or two people like that already. Well, and so here's my question. If it's okay with you, in my career, most of the sellers that I've worked with would prefer to work with an agent who tells them the truth no matter what. And if you're okay with it, that is exactly what I'd like to do tonight. I'd like to be 100% transparent and forthcoming, knowing right now that by telling you the truth, I run the risk on losing the opportunity to work with you. And I would much rather lose the opportunity by telling you the truth than earning your business by lying to you. Is that fair? Yeah, lay it on me. Right, and, and that's the script, right? And that's how we have to approach it because it's too many agents are taking too many listings under false expectations, not telling the sellers the truth. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Oh, oh hey, yeah, brother, 100%. Brother. I mean, this is what it, what it comes down to. You said it right there, the last sentence was setting expectations up front. That, that's what's going to cause your properties to sell at the end of the day is setting the right expectation with the seller up front that you're going to tell them good, bad, or ugly, what is going on with their listing. I, mean, I know you're gonna get into some of this as we keep going here, but you're promising the seller, hey, look, no matter what happens, you're gonna get the goods from me. Um, and I would, I would rather comfort you with the, how, how do I say that in a listing appointment? Uh, I say, listen, I would rather hurt you with the truth than comfort you with lies. Are you okay with that? It's phenomenal. I love that yeah. line. Ron, what were you gonna say? It just comes down to asking hard questions that agents struggle with. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Which again, goes back to our last point is confidence. So asking the hard question and being honest about it is gonna put you in a different spot, just, just as you mentioned. Well, I think that I think what uh, has to happen to be fair is until a new agent takes a listing and it not sell, then they know the importance of setting better expectations. I think having that experience matters because they don't understand how much work it is to get that property on the market, navigate the whole thing, get it sold, deal with the seller's emotion, deal with their own emotions, to be fair. And until you experience that, you say, oh my gosh, never again. I have to get in front of these things. I have to be able to set expectations with sellers that agents are going to leave the lights on. People aren't going to take their shoes off. Buyers are going to want to lowball you. As soon as you do it once, you say to yourself, all right, I got to set better expectations because if you don't, Andrew, as you know, everything becomes your fault as the listing agent. The seller's gonna blame you 100% of the time with whatever goes wrong. Has that been your experience? Yeah, 100%. And and I wanna make something clear too, that there's something that I've run across in talking with students and potential students for the program is um, a big concern that people have, right, is the amount of expired listings that we're having now, tons and you know, way, way more than we've had in the last couple of years. And the concern that a lot of people have, I think, in in calling them and reaching out to them is they're thinking there's kind of this mindset that like, well, they expired because the seller just wanted this amount of money that they just can't get anymore. And I don't think that that I, I mean, I'm sure there's there's some sellers that are like that, but I don't think that's necessarily true. I think a lot of the expireds are because the agent couldn't communicate properly. So they Great are point. willing, ready to sell. They want to sell. Maybe they need to sell but the agent wasn't able to communicate effectively with them. And so it is still beneficial to call them like hundred percent. And I've, I've run into, um, you know, people here and there that are afraid of that problem, that 
the seller wants this crazy price. And so they just don't see a point in calling expireds anymore when that's that's just not the case. Oh my gosh. Listen, first off, Andrew, if we yeah. were on Brad Lee's podcast, I'd be dropping the little bomb noise effect, right? Because what you just said is so spot on. It's so valuable. And that last thing you just said, like, is it worth calling expired listings? I would make the argument it's probably the hottest lead in the real estate industry. I have stats. I'm working on Listing Agent Academy 2.0 content right now, you guys. And I have the stats right in front of me. 37% of expired listings will relist their property within 30 days. 37%. 35% will relist within 90 days. And oh, by the way, 28% or a third won't, well, no, it's more than a third, 28% won't relist, or I'm sorry, will relist with the same agent. Meaning, meaning 70% of these expired listings hire a different agent to Andrew's point. It's, I think you, you, you hit it spot on. I mean, that was such a really, really good, good point. So let's, let's go to point number three. And I forgot to tell you guys, Point number eight, which is going to be at the end of this uh, podcast conversation, is by far the best. So there's my little hook to keep people watching this video longer. And I'm telling you, it is a face melter. I promise you. So let's go to the next point. Point number three, updating the seller proactively. One of the things that I uh, constantly say is, Ron, if you list a property and the seller sends you a text or emails you or leaves you a voicemail that sounds something like this. Hey, Ron, it's, it's, it's Bob. You know, you've got our house listed over there on, on Brookway Street. We're just looking for an update. We have failed the seller miserably. Anytime somebody calls you looking for an update, you know you did not update them proactively. So the third point in getting a, a property listing is I always say, stay ahead of the communication burden. Meaning, update your clients. Keep them in the know. The number one complaint we all know is after an agent hires, or after a seller hires an agent, all communication goes downhill. I don't know what's happening with my listing. So I am a huge proponent of daily updates. Good news, bad news, no news, my clients are never going to be left in the dark. What are your guys' thoughts? What are you seeing? What's been your experience with updating people proactively and uh, and not? Go ahead, Dom. You look like you're... Uh... Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is just something that we normally do. And again, in our listing presentation, we ask, hey, listen, if you heard from me every day, would that be too much? Yeah, I love it. And Yeah. Sometimes they're like, yeah, no, I don't even need to hear from you that much. Or other people are like, especially expired listings to Andrew's point, man, they're like, wait, what? Every day? We I haven't hear heard from, from my agent in agent for months. Yeah. Months. Yeah, that's right. I'm like, you haven't heard from your that's agent right. in months? They're too scared. That's that's the other thing real quick is agents are too scared to update their clients because they, they, they're the ones that are at fault. Go ahead, Ron. What are we going to say? I think right up front is and one of the things we teach our agents in a program is to have a communication schedule set up front. So good. Thing. Go over what could go wrong, what can what, what can happen. These are things that are going to happen. Let them know before they happen so that when it does happen, it's a little easier to get over that bridge without blowing it up. Yeah, and I love it. And Cole, I'm going to I don't know if you've got uh the construction crew still over there or not. But, it's a war but zone over here, boys. All right, that's okay. The one thing I love when I first met you, Colton, I love your your hundred dollar bill play. Um, mm. Share that when it comes to like communicating and, and updating sellers. I just love it so much. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to um, actually. Funny enough, I just thought of this connection. One of your favorite books, as a team, actually, one of our all of our favorite books, a hundred million dollar offers. And part of that book talks about guarantees, right, and value mm. propositions. And so, one value proposition, just as a fun example. Um, being different, part of a value proposition, you want to be different, not better, different, right? And so part of this is you can go to the client and say, look, part of our guarantees is, you know, if I am not on time, if I say I'm going to be here at noon and I'm here at 1201, I owe you a hundred bucks, right? If, um, I can't remember the other ones, but you know, you can use examples. Well, it's the updates, like right? That. Like if you don't hear from me, the, the, the updates, one that I yeah. love that you have is, is Colton pulls out a hundred dollar bill at the listing presentation and says, Mr. Seller, if 
you, if there's ever a time where you and I are not communicating at least on a weekly basis, I will give you $100 for every single occurrence. And it's a nice little, it's, it's easy, it's funny. The seller's like, damn, all right, this is a big deal. And the thing that Ron said is exactly right is, is, is agreeing to the communication plan up front. It's right on our listing presentation. We fill in the date and the time for at least a weekly update with the seller. So that's super, super critical. All right, let's go to point number four. Point number four, obviously, is pricing the property correctly based on competition. And the point I want to make is, is something that I think just agents don't do. I still, so I want your guys' feedback, no BS feedback on this, and I know you guys always will. I am under the belief, and it's been my experience, and it's served me so well in my career. Yes, it's one thing for us to say, yeah, Mr. Agent, price the property right from day one. Everyone's like, yeah, I get that. Price it based on the competition. Price it off active listings. Some agents will even say, okay, that's pretty good. So don't put as much into sold or pending data. Price it off of the actives and I'll take it one step further. Only, only the best, in my opinion, will do this, which is, Dominic, to take the sellers and show them the active listings. Go to the property, pick them up, meet them there, just like you do with the buyer, and show them. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, what I'd like to do on Wednesday afternoon is maybe take an hour, and I want to take you and walk you through the three active properties that we're competing with so we can all, the, the three of us, really understand what it is that we're competing with, take them to a nice lunch, grab a cup of coffee afterwards, and I'm telling you, the, the, you, you will never lose the respect of the seller again because no other agents are doing it. Your guys' thoughts on that? Super good. I mean, that's, super good. That's powerful. Yeah. That's really powerful. Yeah, I, I wanted to say, I, I actually had a conversation recently with one of our students um, about this specifically, and he was telling me that he's doing this. Um, he's taken six listings in a couple of months with us. And not only that, the thing that he was telling me is, a, not not just with the sellers, but the buyers that he's working with, he said that whenever he, you know, they they want to go see a property, half the time he's already been in the property. That's like, right, in person, right? And so it's been an added benefit, not just for the sellers, but for the buyers that he's working with as well. Yeah, and I don't want to get off too much of a tangent, but like you can do this when converting expired listings. You say, listen, until before you and I try to agree to, that we should work together. Why don't we take maybe a couple hours one day and let's just go look at the competition. I'm happy to get you in these properties. I'll schedule the showings. That's a whole nother tactic, a little bonus for the audience. Colton, you like that one? Just to hammer that home, it just made me think like we're willing to spend, most agents are willing to spend hours and hours and days and days of their time showing property to buyers without even signing that little piece of paper that's, that's very important. Point. And And so having that with a for sale by owner, with an expired saying, hey, this is part of what I do with my clients before we agree to work together. I want you to be educated in the market as I am. So we're both on the same page. Like, oh my gosh, that's so powerful. It's huge because people make decisions off emotion. And so if you can spend a couple hours with a, with a client showing them some properties, really pouring into them, like I promise the, the, the amount of agents that are doing this has got to be really close to zero, right? I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever heard any other agents in your markets doing this. Have you guys? No. No. Uh -uh. No. 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 Dominic, do you want to add anything to that point? Well, I would just tell you that um, it's it's just as powerful to offer it because I That's do true. offer it. And most of the time, a seller will get, no, no, it's okay. Uh, uh, no, I, I trust you. Right? They don't, they don't take you up on it. But the fact that you offered it. I mean, you're you're blowing up the bomb before it comes up, right? I love that. Really, really good, Ice Man. That's going to be your new name. Just I, I, I think the other thing it adds, it adds, it adds confidence on your part. That's right. Okay, it's simple. It's not hard to do. Right. And the other thing is, what do you think it's going to do to building the relationship with that person? That's right. Okay, that's and that that's what we're trying to do is just build a confident relationship with that other person. Yeah, because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you actually do care. And it's like, dude, I'm I am in this with you, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Like this this is to this is the uh this is what I'm willing to do to make this happen. So 
Really, really good points. All right, let's go to point number five. Point number five is limiting the showing availability on your listing. So we know a lot based on science. And one of those things is scarcity, urgency, right? I keep getting a lot of questions on, hey, how do I get my listings sold? Well, this is a great thing to do. Instead of, because we know buyer demand is down 70%, instead of leaving the listing open, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, like most agents do, why not create a world, a perception rather, Colton, that your listing, unlike any other listing, is in high demand. And so how do we manufacture that? We do this. So when we take the listing run, we say to the seller, we say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, rather than have your home available for showings every single day, which is very stressful for you, We're just going to have your home available on Saturdays between one and four. You can live life as normal, takes a lot of pressure off the seller. And then Saturday at one to to four, we're trying to create that world of urgency, that world of scarcity to have all the showings in that four hour period of time. And oh, by the way, doing our open house event to try to create some chaos, to get the buyers to look at each other and say, wow, honey, we've never experienced this. At any other house we've seen this week, there must be something special about this house. And boom, there's the fairy dust. Thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody Fly wants demand, what everybody baby. wants, right? If they yeah. show up, yeah, if you show up to a listing and there's three other couples out there with their agents waiting around out front, yeah, that, that definitely creates urgency and scarcity, no question. Well, that's what's been happening over the last two years. Supply and demand, that's what's happened. If you were a buyer... At every listing, there was a line of cars. Like, gosh, this is so frustrating. And then what happened? You walked out of your showing, and the agent's like, hey, you know, there's 14 offers on this thing already. It's like, damn, every time, right? Every single time. So what we need to do now is we can still manufacture that same feeling to put uh, to 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 get buyers to take action, to get buyers to write offers. Ron, I'm sorry, are you going to say something? I think again, the other thing goes back to how can you be different. Okay. Yeah, exactly. This is another great way to do that, and and to put put the seller in in a in a better comfortable position as well. Yeah, exactly. All right, next point: have the seller fill out. And I'm telling you, this might seem small, and we're getting to eight. So you guys hang in there with us. Detailed. Have the seller. I'm telling you, have the seller create a detailed feature and benefit list of the property. Nobody knows this property the way the seller knows the property. And I'm talking details. I'm talking brand of windows. I'm talking type of shingle. I'm talking about width of the plank on the wood floors. Because here's what we're going to do with that. And I'm going to jump right into point number seven. When we have that, now we can help. We can use that information disseminate that information to the buyer's agents who's showing the property, who don't know shit about our listing and make their job easier, make them look good in front of their clients. And quite frankly, make it easier for them to sell our listing. So in a perfect world, we would call every buyer's agent, Andrew. And if Dominic was the agent, what we have to do in point number seven is sell the seller to the buyer and the buyer's agent the same way we all had to, to the listing agent over the last two years. So for context, for the audience, here's what you had to do. And all of you have been in this, this position. If you were going to show a property, you'd have to call that listing agent and sell your buyer to the seller. Sell your buyer to the listing agent. Listen, Dominic, I got a great client. I know you got a bunch of offers. My buyer's the best because of all these reasons. They're this, they're this, they're this, they're this, all that stuff. It's the opposite now, boys. It is the opposite. We as the listing agents must sell the buyer and the buyer's agent on not only the, the the property, but the seller. My seller's super motivated. My seller's open to reviewing offers. My seller's flexible with terms. And so only an experienced listing agent knows this, but it's really important to do this. Dominic, go ahead. Nope, no, nope, I'm just following along. I mean, this is all uh, 100% accurate and it's just part, it's part of our MO. It's what we do already. So yeah, yeah I appreciate you bringing all this up. With well, that in it, mind, it this put, is. Oh, go, go ahead, ahead, RV. Go ahead. I mean, it's put, it's putting you in more control. Okay. Yeah. And that's the other key: it, it being in control of the situation, so you can deliver 
to a seller what he, what he needs. Yeah, Colton, go yeah, ahead. exactly. Go ahead, Colin. What are you going to so, say? Part of what you could do, this is a little bit of a side tangent, but also relates to a lot of the concepts we've talked about, about being different, a value proposition, something. And I just thought of this. I don't think we've ever talked about this before, but you can actually use that feature sheet as a lead generation tool and use that as a value proposition to show your sellers how you market the property do different. So here's an example, maybe in your description on Zillow, on realtor.com say, Hey, if you want a complete feature detail sheet about this property, email Colton at xyz.com, right? To get this. And so now you're going to generate more leads. And so you can Phenomenal. show your sellers. Yeah. And so I'll show you guys a real example. I don't know if you've noticed, I've been look, looking down, I'm taking notes on this exact call. And so if you want the show notes, join our free Facebook group below, I will send this to you and you'll, you can have a, you know, complete detailed notes on the show. So you can reference back to, and you don't have to watch this over and over. So that's an example. Boom, of what you can do to be there's different. another bomb <laughs> drop. So, so yeah, a lot of people yeah. won't catch that. Colton, a lot of people won't catch what you just did, but it's so true. I mean, I didn't even think about that. What a great opportunity. What a great lead magnet. And for a lot of people watching, they're like, what are these guys talking about? But it's just go back and watch that replay that Colton just said. Just go watch that minute segment and it will make sense. Now, drum roll, please. I'm just kidding. Let's talk about number eight. This is so good. This is so good. Uh, what has really, really served me in the past that I think more and more agents should be open to is this, Dominic. I got Dominic just hooked in. You see how what I'm doing, guys? I got him just wheeled in. <laughs> I got him all leaning in. What's he gonna say? What's he gonna say? So we take the information that we have with the seller. We have a conversation with the seller, but we are entering a marketplace where sellers can submit offers to buyers. Did you catch that? So what we're used to is buyers submitting offers to the seller. Well, what if there was a world where the seller made an offer to the buyer, to the buyer's agent? So after the showing, Andrew, I call you and say, hey, listen, what'd your buyer think? I don't know, they're, they're, they're hemming and hawing. I don't know if this is the right, I don't know. Well, what if you and the seller made an offer to you, your buyer, the same way you would to the seller? Sellers making offers to buyers with terms and specifically this is what I'm talking about. A rate or payment reduction buy down. So what if we communicate, you like that Colton? What if you as the listing agent called the buyer's agent, Andrew, and said, hey, listen, I know you guys had showed the property this morning. I know the buyer's kind of thinking about it. The seller would like to offer the opportunity X amount of dollars towards the buyer getting a lower interest rate and a lower payment if they felt this house made sense. So now we're the one initiating the negotiation instead of it always being the buyer. And so I don't know about you guys, but I don't see anybody talking about this. I don't see any agents doing this. Um, and it's critical. Why can't you? Why can't the seller offer the buyer something? Colton, you want to add something? I know you're no, taking I mean, notes, which just, is great. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to like, uh, most of us are aware of maybe, maybe not if you've gotten in the business in the last year or two, but most of us are aware of seller concessions, right? And so right. it's it, like four or five years ago, it was pretty normal. Most of the deals I did had some type of seller concession. Exactly. But now this is the same thing, but directed towards the number one problem buyers are having, which is their interest rate. That's exactly right. So, uh, oh man, I, I'm so excited about this one. I'm going to be screaming from the mountaintops in, in our coaching calls about this. Because it's a great, let me just let me just add this one thing and I want you guys to unpack it. There, there's nothing better that we can do to move the needle for our seller as the listing agent is, is calling that buyer's agent, interacting, not just sitting back. I hate that shit. Like agents just sitting back and hoping and praying that they get an offer. No, let's play some offense. And the offense, Ron, is I call you, you're the buyer's agent. And I before the showing, this is what I do. And I use this at the listing appointment. And I call every buyer's agent before every showing. And I say, Ron, listen, before you show the property today at four o'clock, I just want to give you a couple updates. I just sent you an email with a detailed feature sheet. The, prop uh, the seller went in great detail to help you show the property easier. And during your showing, if you have any questions, I'm going to have my phone on me. So if they have any questions or you have any questions, just call or text me. I'll be available during your showing. Number two, the seller, Bob and Joe Smith, 
They're looking to relocate. They're super motivated sellers, very reasonable people. And so what I would ask you is as you're showing the property, if your buyers have any interest at all, let's talk about an offer that might make sense for both parties. Fair enough. Ron says, cool, man. Thank you so much. He's never been treated that way. Then after, after the showing, say, Ron, how did the showing go? Ron says, well, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. I say, listen, I talked to Bob and, 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 and Joanne and they wanted me to pass this along to you and your buyer. They'd like to make your buyer an offer because of interest rates and how high they are. I don't know what type of financing your client's getting or, or what their plans are, but they'd like to offer X dollars, call it $5,000 either off the price of the home or they'd like to put that into the buyer's interest rate to help them get a lower payment. So can you do me a favor? Can you pass that along to the buyer? And we've made that first offer. Your guys' thoughts on that? Well, again, I think it goes back to uh, number one, being proactive with, with the market the way it is. Houses aren't selling as quickly. This is going to put you in, ahead of everybody else. It's going to put you in a position where you've got some new ideas, you're throwing out some new things to make things happen. Again, exactly. being proactive. Yep. Yeah, and I, I think too, like the communication standard, not just between like you and your clients, but with other agents has to be different than it's been in the past couple of years. Because we're so used to, again, like the craziness, like we would submit an offer and then you don't even hear back from the seller agent, the listing exactly. agent. And until, or you don't even hear back. You just see that it's now it's under contract like that. And then that's how you're, that's how you're notified. Right. And so having so this true. difference in communication is going to be, in my opinion, I think that it's going to be massive if you're able to communicate in that way to a buyer's agent and show them that you are a different type of listing agent, which is going to be better. Yeah. hundred percent. So listen, gentlemen, appreciate your time. I hope uh, you watching the audience, we're going to do this, the reverseselling.com team, we're going to do this every week, okay? We're going to take a topic just like we did today. We'll take 30 minutes. We'll break it down in great detail so that after you watch this podcast episode, you got some practical takeaways that can impact your business. And so, gentlemen, thank you guys so much for the time.